An investigation is underway into the fatal shooting of a man by police. A police officer makes a desperate attempt to resuscitate a gunman after he was shot several times by armed officers in Tottenham last night. Mark Duggan, 29, was about to be arrested when, for reasons that haven't been confirmed yet, marksmen opened fire. When we talk about the riots, we still have to go back into the stem of why the riots started. And that's because Mark died, whether people like it or not, whether people know him or not. But he is the reason why everything is starting. There was about 150 people outside the police station and they were out there, there were five patients. All they wanted was a few answers as to what was happening. The police completely ignored them, you know what I mean, just treated them with contempt. A young 16-year-old approximately went to approach them just to, again, find out roughly what's going on. And they just took some evasive action by pushing her and then drawing their batons. And that's when the people then started to retaliate. They beat up a girl, they hit up a girl, they, a girl's on the floor, the police, have you seen it? Did you just see the police stomped at a girl? And let me tell you, six officers beat a young girl with their batons. And that's what sparked off the riots. <laughs> When youth clubs and get shut down, it cuts kids' roots off and links. They don't really have anywhere to go. The youth centres down, they didn't even alert the young people. So it was like one day the youth centre was there and then the next day it was gone. Go to a couple youth clubs and obviously there was somewhere for us to go and that. Get me And now we just, there's nothing to do now. Like we're just out here, we're just getting up to no good. Like people are, are intimidated by us. Like, there's nothing to do. If all my friends were here, you would see the type of behaviour I'm talking about. Closing the youth centres, I think, is kind of bad because those were places where people went to stay out of trouble. Yeah. Especially those youngsters they're pointing the finger at. There's been, like, I'm a youth, but there's no youth clubs, dude. Like, <laughs> really. I'm, I'm out of work because of it. Like, I'm, I'm not even work. talking from, a, from, from being a youth. There's no youth clubs. There's been so many cuts that these kids have literally nowhere to be but on the street. road. Mm -hmm. There's no money for them, there's nothing for them to do. There's no after school centers, there's no this, unless you have money to pay for it, which they don't. So they feel like they have, there's no motivation, there's no ambition for them to go out there and get anything. I literally would not be able to go to college. It's simple as that because I wouldn't be able to, for one, like get there, for two, do you know what I mean? Like having lunch and stupid stuff like that. It's so, a big part. A very big part. Like without EMA, I know a lot of people now that are thinking about they can't go to college because of stuff like that. Mm. And that's a shame because then really and truly it's just, you're just basically telling them to just go and do their own thing. They should put back on EMA, help all the single mothers uni that are struggling. Cuts. Put that back on. Uni cuts, everything. Like, come on, money-wise, isn't it? Basically, because this ain't just like we're doing it for the fun of it. We're doing this for money, to survive in this world. But until we get that, or a little bit of support from the government, it's not going to stop. That's what I think, innit? We're all suffering. 
the, 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 the system's not helping us like how they say they are. They have these meetings, they're not helping with the youths. There's no youth clubs in the states, in, in urban estates as they call it. There's no money in, in poor, the poorest communities. We see it over and over again. The richer will get richer, the poorer will get poorer. There's been so many cuts, and especially for people from poorer backgrounds, and especially for young people, and they, that brings them to the streets, basically. And I, I'm sure, I'm sure this is one of the reasons for, why, for this happening, uh, because they don't feel like part of society. Why would they damage society if they felt like um, import, an important part of it? They cut off benefits, they don't give people a chance, they put up gas, they put up electric, they put up petrol, they put up rent, they put up leases, everything, yeah? everything they put up, everything. right? And then, and then, and then when they like, and you keep saying, people keep warning that there's going to be a social meltdown, there's going to be a social meltdown. Youth today, I'll be honest with you, I think you've got to feel sorry for them because you can't get a job anywhere. Where are you going to get a job unless you've got a top qualifications or you know someone who's got a job who can give you a job? You're knackered, aren't you, really? Brixton is a community that's becoming more and more impoverished because of central government cuts, but also because of local Labour Council cuts to public services. They keep making cuts so more people lose jobs. And they say they're going to make jobs. How can you make jobs if you keep cutting jobs? You can't. Start giving the youths them a chance. Give them something. Put college fees up, nine grand. And who can afford that? And who around here can afford to, 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 to pay to go to uni for nine grand? You're just dividing classes. The thing is, most of the time I'm looking for any type of job, even cleaning jobs. I've seen people go for cleaning jobs and they've been asked for experience. So what do you do if just something that is so simple as cleaning job, they're asking you for experience, which you don't have. And so how are you meant to gain experience if you don't already have that experience? So I think a lot of people are frustrated because they look for jobs for so long, they can't... But you don't really need the experience for that You, you don't job. need something like... Even retail. Retailing, McDonald's jobs, you need experience. So how are we going to gain experience if we don't work there in the first place? And I don't think we need experience because it's just something we want to do to gain some sort of money, especially if you're at uni. Yeah. And if you're not at uni, it's more frustrating because... It's not easier to get a proper job because people want to not go to uni and get a proper job to make a living, but they don't. And they're being blamed because they're hanging about in the streets, but it's not really their fault. They just can't find nothing. So at the end of the day, I just think creating more jobs, for example, for them would be one thing. All the uni cuts and stuff, like, it's really hard on other people. And it's like, there's a way of them showing how they, they want to fight back because they, they, they ain't MPs, they ain't going to be there when they're um, deliberating all these um, facts and opinions. The most they can do is do the riots and at least get heard. I, I come from Brixton, uh, I've lived in Brixton all my life, so I was around in the first wave of riots that were caused by years of neglect, years of poverty, and of course police harassment and brutality. And a lot of those themes, I think, have played themselves out in the riots this time around. It's been years of neglect, it's been years of people in higher positions thinking of themselves and losing the contact with the communities. With a riot, it's like you're fighting for what you want and what you feel you're entitled to and what you need. Like kids nowadays, all they want is mobile phones, expensive ones, te televisions, Xbox, you know. Like, they, they went out and fought for what, you know, fought, fought for what they wanted, I guess. And, and, and took what they wanted, you know. And that's the thing, a right is about taking, taking back what's yours, you know. So. The police is like Foot Locker, where they spend their money. That doesn't give them the right to, but that's what they want. Trainers, this is what the society has brought them down to. I want new trainers, I want new video games, I want new clothes. So if that's what you're going to get back, if that's what you put out, then that's what you get back. That's, that's what the youths want. It's not like them go and broke the bank and whatever and this and that and there. Or them, them loot every single shop on the road. They went to specific shop, to specific things that... Whether it's right or wrong, we know it's not right, but frustration is a dangerous thing. 
trainers being, being uh, advertised. 120 pound trainer. You know what that's like for a pair of like needs out to try and buy for my son? People say, well, why does he have the 120 pound trainer? Well, if you shove it in his face on the TV and you tell him that it's the best thing to have and it's the top of the grade, then why should he want it? about no rights or nothing it was because people wanted stuff from the shops and that's what they did they took everything there's loads of people who come from deprived areas and yet they're not going they're not going around smashing shops to get you know what they want I come from a deprived area I live in Edmonton my daughter comes from a deprived area she lives with me but she's not going around doing that it's kind of led on to like a copycat effect and so when so you know after the Tottenham riots wherever it was I think maybe Enfield next and they saw that you know the police weren't really doing anything I think other areas maybe such as Brixton or whatever just saw it as the perfect opportunity to get in there so I think after Tottenham I think it led it wasn't anything to do about the guy that got shot it was just I think it was more about opportunity let's get in there get what we want and you know, that's how I kind of saw it. Just people sort of, they, they see the shop open, I'm going to go and get some free. So there's going to be an opportunistic side to it. It's a really disgraceful act. It's basically, um, you know, I see this criminality. You know, there's no point for it. Everybody wants to be happy and be in that sort of lifestyle. Nobody's going to want to be like that. So when anybody has an opportunity that, to be like that, they're going to want it. People with, uh, who were just ready to follow a crowd. And, just, you know, there's some people there who, who have it all. But because everyone else is looting, it seems like a good idea. Might as well. The school structure is really important and how schools make people feel. If schools can make people feel that they can aspire, I think that makes a big difference as well. We need to create more jobs because if you see a lot of interviews throughout the rights. A lot of children were saying that there's no jobs, no jobs, that's why we're forced to do this. And it's proven that there's no jobs because there's cuts everywhere. You know, I was assigned with a mentor in a bank in the city and, you know, he, he still to today mentors me and gives me tips on life and how to do well and that kind of stuff. So, you know, if the, if the government could kind of, you know, allocate some good mentors and kind of, you know, send them around to schools and, you know, we could kind of get a good mix kind of going on. I feel they've been rejected. Nobody wants them, nobody loves them, nobody care about them. And we are just walking on the street here doing nothing. The only way you can solve this problem is give the children something incentive. They need incentive, something to look forward to, something to wake up in the morning and say, I am going to do this, instead of I am going to walk the road and look some money to steal. The reality is the government ain't doing nothing for the kids. And when I say they ain't doing nothing, it's shutting down everything. So it only looks like the used and role models today are what you see on TV or the ex-gangster level or, you know, it's a sports personality. And I'm far as concerned, youths of today's got much more energy and brains to be entrepreneurs, but where's that money coming from? They're trapped in themselves because they don't have any foundations, any morals, any structure in their life at all. So to kind of use them as a scapegoat and say, you know, like the youths, the youths, we as people need to be parents regardless if we've given birth or not. We need to be consistent, we need to have values and implement them so that when they do see the people living the fast life, they understand the value of working hard. Sometimes being so close-minded works great for you when you're trying to control a, a nation of people. But being that close-minded is also your detriment in a time like this. Because all it takes is a spark and the room's been filling up with gas. And when it explodes, you're surprised. Don't be. Don't be. You left the gas set on. You left it on. And you, 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 can't be, you can't be mad at the spark. You can't be mad at it's, it's a culmination of things. It's not one, it's never one thing in splendid isolation. It's never just, oh, these users, are, uh, they're yobs, they're thugs. Mm. Uh, we're, seeing, we're seeing unprecedented thuggery. All of that kind of stuff, all that kind of talking is just shows a complete misunderstanding of the situation. This is criminality, pure and simple. It is criminality, pure and simple, and there is absolutely no excuse for it. Yeah. You can see, you know, when certain agendas start coming out in this time, you see, you see certain underlying points running through it. What we're trying to get across, what, what we're really trying to say here. You have, to, you have to look at these things. You have to look at who gets shown looting. We know who's looting. But who gets shown looting? 
Who gets shown? Who 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 do they speak to? Who do, who do they <coughs> repeat their statements on and on? And who gets to speak once and never gets shown again? Dark is hell. Thank you. It was needless, opportunistic theft and violence. Nothing more, nothing less, and it is completely unacceptable. The young people stealing flat screen televisions and burning shops, that was not about politics or protest, it was about theft.